Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the content patch for the 4th of June 2013. My name is Total Biscuit with today's gaming news and comment. Coming up in the show, IDOS Montreal teases The Fall, a possible continuation of the Deus Ex franchise. Metro Last Light significantly outselling 2033, according to publisher Deep Silver. Plants vs. Zombies 2 has been announced, although it's probably not what you are looking for. And a roundup of this week's releases coming to you, along with the OC Remix track of the day, right about now. In a cryptic message on their Twitter feed, Idos Montreal asked, Are you ready for the fall? Good question. Am I in fact ready for the fall? It's not even summer yet, really? Or is it? Well, it's supposed to be summer, but looking outside, it very clearly is not, so nature has been lying to me. Regardless of the fact, it would appear that there is a possibility that there will be a new Deus Ex game titled The Fall, which makes a fairly large amount of sense when you consider the actual lore of the Deus Ex series, the fact that Deus Ex Human Revolution was actually placed before the events which led to the original Deus Ex game, where everything is essentially in ruins, and very much a huge, stark difference in both the visual style and the overall quality of life, and just the general state of civilization, it would appear, in between those two games. So it would make a massive amount of sense to actually set the game during those events. Now bear in mind that Deus Ex The Fall is in fact a registered domain for IDOS, as well as Human Defiance, which was in fact both an April Fool's joke and a planned movie. We really don't know what's going on with that. However, The Fall is very much a registered domain of IDOS. The question, I suppose, then becomes, what would we want from a new Deus Ex game? What would I personally want from a new Deus Ex game? Most of you know that the original Deus Ex is my favorite game of all time, and remains so. Now, I was pretty happy with Human Revolution, honestly. It was, it was a solid sequel. I mean, in comparison to the nonsense that we received with Invisible War, something that, quite frankly, I refuse to even acknowledge as a real Deus Ex game, Human Revolution was surprisingly good. It didn't dumb down too much. It kept some of the nice stuff that I was looking for. And overall, the plot and the action and the exploration were very, very strong indeed. I think the cool thing about Deus Ex is the ability to approach various different objectives in various ways and the number of things that you can actually find out in the world, which involves levels which... It's not an open world game, right? I think you've got to understand, Deus Ex has never been an open world game. However it has very large open levels with a lot of stuff in it that is hidden. And that to me is the real joy of Deus Ex, the fact that there is so much to discover off the beaten path and you can take part in a lot of different activities that are not immediately obvious. Some of them don't even have a tangible reward. That's the coolest thing about it. It actually felt like a living world even though it very clearly wasn't. Something you've got to consider there. Being able to get involved in little altercations here and there that don't even necessarily reward you with anything, just simply because you chose to either get involved or not get involved. That's awesome. I like that a lot. Human Revolution had that. Had a good world to explore. The balance between the non-lethal and lethal combat is not necessarily something that I think was done all that well. The game very much had a little bit too much ammunition in my honest opinion, and as a direct result, you were not so much forced to do things in a particular way based on the situation. You could really do whatever you wanted. And if you used non-lethal, which you should have because it's just as easy as lethal, then you ended up getting more points for it. It also got to the point where because of the way that the experience system works, you ended up grinding experience in certain areas that resulted in there being no more reason to explore because you had more money than God, more ammo than God, and so on and so forth. There were definitely some issues with that game. The biggest standout issue, though, that has to be fixed is, of course, the boss battles. The boss battles in the original Deus Ex could, for the most part, be avoided. There was really only one boss that you had to fight, and even then you could glitch him out to bypass him. There were a number of really interesting situations in that game that could actually be avoided by doing research hours before. That's the coolest thing about it. You were able to avoid them by finding something out hours and hours before that. And I don't want to spoil it for those of you who haven't played it, even though the game's really, really old. 
there are some really cool things in that game that do not involve direct confrontation. Now, if you're playing a character that's not focused on direct confrontation, you're still forced into these boss battles the same way. What really annoyed me, actually, was when I beat the first boss, I did it entirely non-lethal. I used my taser and I used my sleep darts and I used some gas and things like that. As in, I didn't lay a finger on this guy. And then the cutscene shows him battered and bruised and filled with bullet holes. I are you kidding me? I didn't shoot him with anything. That was actually a huge immersion breaker for me. Really, really ridiculous. I mean, hell, even in the first game on the first level, if you go to the top of the Statue of Liberty, what's left of it, and if you either shoot or stun or knock out the NSF leader there, you get a different response from the game every time you do it. It, even, it recognizes the difference between lethal and non-lethal, at least for a while. The problem with Deus Ex is that after the first three levels, it kind of gets rid of that. But to be honest, after the first three levels, you don't really have that central authority to chastise you for it regardless. So I guess there's a reason for it. But even then, the original Deus Ex didn't really go far enough. Deus Ex Human Revolution moved way too far away from that, in my opinion. So there are definitely things that need to be fixed, in my honest opinion. There really, really are. And the idea of power for melee, I mean, really? Come on. Gotta eat a chocolate bar before I can punch someone in the face? Are you kidding me? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, there's lots of potential here. I trust Idos Montreal to make a good Deus Ex game because they already have done one. I really do hope that this is related to it. I don't see how it couldn't be. Deus Ex Human Revolution was a success for them. And more importantly, they've acknowledged the faults with it. They've come out and said, yeah, we didn't do this all that well. But that's the most important thing, isn't it? Not being blinded. It's very difficult when you're inside a developer bubble for maybe two years to really see the problems with your own product. That's not their fault. That's actually really tricky when you think about it. But for them to come out and say, yeah, we didn't do this very well. And we're going to actually do what we can to fix that. Yes, exactly the right thing to do. Now, hopefully they don't go too crazy with the pre-order DLC. Don't really want to have to buy the limited edition in order to get the Tracer Tong mission. Yeah, we didn't need that. Deep Silver is celebrating the success of Metro Last Light, claiming that it significantly outsold Metro 2033 in the same launch period. They gave examples saying that the game has more than tripled Metro 2033's worldwide sales over the same opening week period in the US. The sequel sold through more boxed units in its first week of sale than Metro 2033 has managed lifetime to date. They also said that Last Light has sold more units in its first week of sale than Metro 2033 did within three months. Now, as regards to how well 2033 did in the first place, it sold over 1.5 million copies and was considered a success by THQ. Both games had warm reception, though Last Light was widely regarded to be the more polished of the two, fixing many of the problems that the original game suffered from. It has been one of the highest rated games this year thus far. Developer 4A also chimed in on their success, saying that they are honored by the reception of their latest project. They're a small but dedicated team, lucky to have been given the creative freedom and support to make the kind of experience we dream as gamers of playing. Our work on Last Light continues with new single player DLC and we look forward to revealing future projects from the team. Pretty good news, honestly. I mean, it's actually incredible that Metro Last Light exists in the first place, considering the many pieces of news that came out about The Office, there were claims that members of the team were actually threatened by armed thugs, the officers are tiny, there were frequent power outages, all sorts of crazy nonsense going on over there in the Ukraine for them. And yet a tiny team produced one of the best looking and most atmospheric games I've ever seen. I mean, as regards to a showpiece, it is one of the most impressive titles I've ever seen on PC. It's ridiculously good looking. I mean, it is an incredible game in and of itself as well. It's not just down to the actual graphics itself. It is about the atmosphere and it's very much about the gunplay. All of these things are very strong, very positive indeed. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes from the DLC here, and it seems like the first acquisition of THQ property there by Deep Silver has worked out pretty damn well for them. I'm hoping that other games such as Saints Row 4 do as well, although that kind of remains to be seen. We should point out, of course, that the acquisition of these games by Deep Silver came at a time in their development when things weren't really subject to change. Those games have been set down, so 
if you know about Saints Row 4, then you know that Volition decided, instead of making that whole President thing a DLC, to turn it into a full game. There have been mixed reactions to that, to say the least, although I feel that a lot of people are attributing it to meddling by Deep Silver, when in reality it was all down to Volition. But in this case, it seems like Last Light has done pretty damn well. They've now fixed the FOV issues as well, if you wish to edit the config files, which I would strongly recommend. And as a direct result, the game is more than playable on PC and is highly impressive indeed. So, well done to the guys over at 4A and Deep Silver. Hopefully, they continue with that kind of success. Plants vs. Zombies 2 It's About Time has been announced for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch with no PC version in sight and a release date of July the 18th. Now, in what will most likely be regarded by many people as extremely bad news, the title will in fact be free to play. It will not be a single purchase, which means that this thing is no doubt going to be absolutely littered with microtransactions and in-app purchases to begin with. PopCap claims that it offers dozens of new levels and multiple themed worlds, as well as, as you might imagine, new plants and new zombies with all new touchscreen power-ups that enable players to break the fourth wall and interact with zombies directly. Yes, I, that is exactly what I wanted in my game, the ability to break that fourth wall and interact with the zombies directly. Will there be a real emotional connection? between me and the zombies. I suppose that's the question there. The themes include Ancient Egypt, the Wild West, and Pirate Seas. Not that this really seems to change anything whatsoever. Looking at the screenshots here, it seems like the same kind of zombies will appear regardless, and they will just have different hats. I guess there will probably be unique zombies available in each of these different worlds. That would make sense. But right now, looking at it, it doesn't seem that that would be the case. In fact, I'm seeing what appears to be some kind of punk rocker zombie in the Wild West, which is very, very strange indeed, but I don't know. I mean, more of the same for Plants vs. Zombies would certainly be a good thing indeed. The only problem that I really had with PvZ as a game was the fact that it was just too slow. I mean, trying to get back into that game, the first like 20 levels just happen at a snail's pace and send you to sleep. So it takes ages to really get into the game if you have even the slightest bit of experience with tower defense, even though it can be challenging later on. So that was a gigantic pain in the ass. Now there's no information whatsoever as to whether or not this will actually come to a real machine like PS3, 360, or indeed PC. Very, very odd indeed. The Merchant, by the name of Crazy Dave, will be back offering special plant upgrades and tools and weapons, as well as plant food to supercharge plants. I have no doubt that some of this will involve microtransactions. And this is where it really comes down to, isn't it? When you convert a previously standalone game into a free-to-play title, you run the risk of ruining the game because that business model directly interferes with the actual mechanics and the way that the game is structured. There are very few ways to really avoid that. The only way to do it is to go down the Capcom route where they say, this is a free-to-play game. What it really is, is usually the first two levels, and then you either pay for the whole game, by in-app purchases or you pay for it in parts. I think that's a really good model. It's actually very consumer friendly. Gives you multiple ways to experience a title. You don't have to buy the whole game. If you get sick of the game halfway through, you've only bought half the game. I mean, what a great business model. F absolutely fantastic. However, I cannot imagine that this will be done in the same way. Now, don't get me wrong. PopCap has not done that badly with free-to-play titles on iOS. They have not stooped to the level of Zynga. They have not stooped to the level of many companies that just nickel and dime the hell out of you. But of course, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And if people are upset about this, then I don't blame them one little bit because the original game was nice. You could buy it for a low price and then you just played it. That's, that's how I remember games being. Free-to-play can meddle with things. If you're going to have a free-to-play system and you want to actually make some money, then you've got to really encourage people to buy the microtransactions. How do you do that? Well, let's say, for instance, that they happen to decide that these upgrades you can get via Dave cost more than they did previously in terms of in-game currency. But it's okay, you can skip that by either buying a booster or just by straight up buying the currency within the game. 
how about when they design levels in such a way that it's not possible to complete without a very specific plant that is either ridiculously hard to grind for and very tedious or that you have to buy for real money. There are all sorts of things that can really screw with a game when it comes to free to play and if this was on PC I would be less concerned. It may even be that they decide to release it later on PC and take all the microtransaction nonsense out. In fact, it's, it's highly likely if a PC version comes along that they will take that microtransaction nonsense out and sell it for a reasonable price, which for me is fine. Yeah, if that's what they're doing, okay, fine. Let the iOS guys suffer, right? but no. I, that would be cruel, wouldn't it? I, I don't wish suffering on anybody in this case, especially not the iOS guys. I mean, that they have to deal with so much nonsense. Look at, oh, what a great looking game. Oh, it's in our purchases. It's completely ruined. It really, really can. It's the Wild West. There, there are no scruples. There are no morals and ethics when it comes to iOS. The kind of stuff that would never be acceptable when it came to PC free-to-play games is rampant on that platform. So I am very, very cautious about this. I don't like the fact they've changed the business model. I understand why they did it, because that seems to be the way that a lot of iOS stuff is going, but I will not be partaking in it on iOS. I will be waiting to see if there's a proper PC release. And finally, time to look at the release dates for this week. Let's see what games are coming out. So. Starting with Scrolls, it's coming out on PC. Specifically, the beta is being released. That is a paid beta, so you'll be able to get into that, I believe, for around $15. That is coming out June the 3rd, which is the time of recording, so it should be out by the time that you have watched this. Interesting. I like collectible card games. I'll definitely be checking this out. Also, already out by the time that you watch this video, will be Gunpoint, which is the... 2D hack em up. I guess that's probably the best way to describe that particular title. I've already done a WTF is on this. I did it like six months ago. I would strongly recommend that you watch that. You will be very frustrated because I'm terrible at it, but that game has all sorts of emergent possibilities and it needs to be on your radar. Remember Me is out today on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PC. My full video of that will probably be coming in the next few days. I did do a 10 minute video. There was an embargo agreement on this game that said you can't use more than 10 minutes of footage, which was bloody ridiculous, I might add. But once that embargo agreement has expired, which will of course be when the game comes out, I'll be able to do a full lengthy video on it. There are a lot of problems that this game has, and I'm looking forward to talking about it in detail. But also, I'm a little sad that the game suffers from it, considering what an amazing world that they've actually created. Class of Heroes 2 available on PSP and PlayStation Vita. I believe the original Class of Heroes had quite the cult following, so that might be something that people are looking forward to. The actual game itself is in some small ways similar to the way Persona does things in the sense that you have to attend school and then you go on quests for different assignments. It is very much a dungeon crawler JRPG. Might interest some people. We've got Xbox 360 Minecraft. We've also got Marvel Heroes coming out today for PC. Haven't had a chance to actually check that out yet. I've heard very, very mixed opinions on it though, so we'll see. I'll hopefully check it out over the next couple of weeks. A couple of PS2 classics coming to PlayStation Network, including Alfa Romeo Racing Italiano and Ultimate Board Game Collection. Not exactly anything to write home about there. Toro's Friend Network will also be finding its way to the PlayStation Vita. I don't even know what the hell's going on with that one. And if you haven't picked up Skyrim yet, the Legendary Edition comes out on June the 4th, which contains all the DLC, so very much worth grabbing that. It's a good way to invest in it. And last but by no means least, Sunday we'll see the release of Animal Crossing New Leaf, which will be available on its own or as part of a 3DS XL bundle. That will be June the 9th. And we can no doubt expect many people to simply disappear from the face of the planet as a direct result of that game. It tends to be something of a time vampire. All right, folks, that pretty much wraps me up for the day. Thank you very much for watching the content patch. Before I go, though, I'd like to share with you my OC Remix track of the day. Chilled Out is not something you usually associate with F-Zero. Very fast and very awesome series of Nintendo games that I very much wish would actually make a comeback. This track, however, by Rizovian is very much laid back, chilled out, maxed, relaxed, all cool, and so on and so forth. It is from F-Zero GX. The name of the track is Beyond Velocity. It's a remix of Zen Aero Police from F-Zero GX, which very much had a different kind of soundtrack to the regular F-Zeros, but 
I am not feeling in a very energized mood today. So this is the kind of thing that I will put on to relax. Enjoy the track. You can download it in the description below this video. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.